Nook Karaka. I move that the question be... Mr Chair, I move the question be now put. Um, I'm... Members will resume the seat while I'm on, on uh, my feet. Um, I'm not going to take it now, but I am going to warn people that I will now be looking very closely to speeches being on the detail of the bill, not a relitigation of the history of the Auckland region. Grant Robertson. Very much, Mr. Chair. And you can rest assured I'm not going to be talking You're about a long history of the Auckland region. Uh, Mr. Chair, I want to start uh, with a question for the Minister and the Chair uh, relating to the departmental disclosure uh, statement that uh, suggests to us that advice provided to the Attorney General about whether or not there would be a Section 7 report. Um, would be available uh, prior to the introduction of the bill. I can find no evidence of such advice on the table. Uh, I've had a quick look at the Ministry of Justice's website and I can find no evidence of that there. Uh, again, this is an example of where, uh, in a situation under urgency, when we don't have a select committee process, uh, we have an assurance here in the departmental disclosure statement that this would be accessible uh, prior, prior, or available, rather, on the Ministry's website upon introduction of the bill. It's not. That's shocking. It's actually not available. And it is a, a serious matter, Mr Chair, because I do believe when we are talking about uh, hearings that members of the public will be participating in, which is what's covered throughout um, the substantive part here in part one, uh, there are questions of rights of natural justice. That is one of the main uh, issues within the Bill of Rights Act um, in, in terms of, of the right to justice. Uh, the exact wording in, in the Bill of Rights Act is about the observance of the principles of natural justice by any tribunal which has the power uh, to make a determination over the rights of a citizen. That's one of these hearings panels. That's exactly what these hearings panels are doing. They are undertaking work as a tribunal on a matter of the rights of Aucklanders, the way in which their city will be created. So we thought, well I certainly thought I would see a Bill of Rights vet um, come forward on this matter. I think that the Ministry for the Environment, who were responsible for the drafting of the de departmental disclosure statement, also thought that we were going to be seeing a uh, Bill of Rights vet, and we don't. So I would ask the Minister and the Chair to explain to the House what's going on here. Uh, I think it's a reasonable question. And the reason I do think that question of the observance of the principles of natural justice uh, by, a, by a tribunal, the, the, the clause from um, the Bill of Rights Act, is uh, brought into the situation here, Mr Chair, is because of what is happening in Clause 4. And that is the amendment of the number of um, uh, commissioners hearing um, being reduced from three to two. What this bill does is increase the number of commissioners from seven to ten, which means that we are running into a situation where a hearing will be conducted by 20% of the membership. Now, I want a minister or a member of the government to stand up and tell me whether they think that upholds the principles of natural justice. Actually making it a percentage figure somewhat masks the problem that emerges here, and Mr Mark raised this, which is that 20% is two people. That's just two people in a room. Does that uphold the right of a, an Auckland resident to fairly be heard in terms of their right of natural justice under the Bill of Rights Act? Because we've already discussed the fact that once you get down to two, Mr Chair, it's not so much a quorum as potentially a collusion. Because if there's actually only two people in the room, it's quite easy for those two people to be coming from a very, very specific point of view. It's equally easy, um, and you know, there are, there's both a, a constitutional point here, Mr Chair, and a very practical one which is that when someone has come forward with their submission and they're confronted by two people and one of them's playing on their cell phone, um, are they actually being treated fairly and well when they're in the room? That's the practical point. Uh, is that the best that we could expect for Aucklanders who have taken the time to make a submission about the unitary plan? But if we move to the constitutional end of it, having only two people there out of a group of 10 
runs, I believe, some considerable risks. Now, the Labor Party is supporting this legislation, but as a member who has not had the opportunity to hear from my colleagues who were on a select committee, I haven't properly heard any actual justification for this. I can guess what it is, Mr Chair. I can guess the fact that it's because, and I'm, I can't really talk about, I, I know I can actually talk about this in this part, uh, because they are going to expand the number of commissioners to 10 and then run concurrent hearings. So I can understand that, uh, but I don't believe that any minister or any Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair 